Welcome everyone that checked out the Twitter Q&A for this weekend. And for those of you that haven't, after you watch this Facebook Q&A, go check out the Twitter Q&A for this weekend as well here on OTR Essential. Let me go ahead and get started with the Facebook portion here. Should be some good questions. Try to see how many I can get through in 15 minutes or less. Hopefully these questions are good, but we shall see. Uh, let's start off with, um, I guess I haven't pre-screened these Facebook questions, so I'm trying to read through as we go along. Uh, Duke Morris, do you think WWE would have more top stars if the audience booed all the heels and cheered all the faces like we were supposed to do? Now, if the WWE did a better job of booking heels as heels and booking faces as faces, um, then yes, that would most certainly help because guys would be getting over in the way that they should, and maybe it would force people to actually play along. Um, you know, sometimes that's a contrarian nature of those of us that think we know more than we do, So we try to sit there and flex that and say, hey, we're the cool dipshits, we're cheering the bad guys, and we're booing the good guys, and all this other dumb crap. Um, it would help, it would help, but there are so many other issues that go along with it. Um, let's see here. Shane Delane, why has WWE let themselves become so dependent on part-timers such as God, Undertaker, Lesnar, etc. in order to draw big money at WrestleMania? It's because of the position that they find themselves in that they put themselves in being that publicly traded company that lives for that fiscal quarter and that short-term immediate return. Long-term planning and vision don't really fit into that mix. And you know, as Vince has gotten older, he's gotten even more impatient and you see that reflect in the, uh, the product and the way the shows are written and the way the matches and shows are booked. Uh, so the WWE has to rely on these names that have been established years ago because they can't establish new names now. And that's a simple fact of the matter. They just can't do it. They've plowed Cena and others down your throat for so many years that they failed to build up anybody else. They have to rely on these guys to help them. Okay. Brandon Akins, how come we still never got Triple H versus Reigns yet? Good question. We should have. At some point in time, they need to do it. Triple H and Reigns would be a nice natural setup for Triple H and Rock at WrestleMania 32, you would think, or an appropriate follow-up after Triple H Rock at WrestleMania 32. Or, thir yeah, 32, excuse me. Uh, I don't know why we haven't gotten it yet, um, but we should have. I think part of it was they were maybe setting up to it, but that's when Reigns got hurt and everything else. Um... What else we got? Stephen Bradley, if Triple H's daughters get married with their, will their son-in-law be pushed to the moon and bury everyone? Would he be a member of the Breakfast Club? Well, I'm sure if he's related to Triple H, that most certainly is not going to hurt his political position in the WWE. Let's put it that way. Uh, they just don't hand out Breakfast Club memberships to anybody, so let's keep that in mind. Aaron Gregorich, are you looking forward to the first Republican debate especially if Donald Trump is in that debate. Um, looking forward to it from a mocking the GOP and how out of touch they have become type of way. Looking at it is the fact that they've had eight years to prepare, you know, give or take, uh, during Obama's presidency, seven years, I guess you could say, or close to it. Uh, and these are the best and the brightest that they could come up with. What the hell does that say? You know, looking at it from a comedy of errors type of standpoint. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, sure. Especially if Donald Trump is into the debate. Oh, yes. Uh, Graham Burley, is storytelling a lost art in a match? They all seem to be spot fest. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Now, sometimes you can tell a great story via spots and via spot fest. But, yeah, I do think that a lot of these matches lack story within them, lack any type of cohesiveness. It's just like we piece it together, buy time to get to this spot, buy time to get to the next spot, do a couple of things here, too many false finishes, no selling, and all this other crap. And what it really frustrates me about it in particular is that finishes are not finishers. Finishers are not finishes. You shouldn't have to hit your finisher three or four times. It's a finisher for a reason. That should be all she wrote 99.5% of the time. That rare time somebody does kick out of your finish it should be against the best level of opponent or with the right type of situation circumstances. It shouldn't just be happening half or more of your damn matches. That's stupid. The fact that Cena hits three AAs on somebody before he beats him is stupid. Or the fact that somebody would have to hit three pop-up power bombs, let's say, on a Cena to beat him, or still couldn't beat him, is fucking stupid. 
It diminishes the performers and it diminishes their finishing maneuvers and hurts the credibility of the product. Moises Enrique, would you like to see Cena, Triple H, Orton, Sheamus do the Breakfast Club dance at the end of WrestleMania? I'd like to see that faction be put into full motion. That's what the fuck I'd like to see. You want people to believe in it? You want people to buy in it? You want to have real heels? You align Triple H, Orton, John Cena, and Sheamus. Bring back Batista. And the magic fucking happens. Period. Let's see here. Who else we got? Uh, Robert Wyatt. Who do you think is an underrated giant? I think both Bigelow and Andre are underrated nowadays. I don't think Andre's underrated. I think Big Show is underrated because of overexposure and Big Show fatigue. I think a lot of people underrate just how good he's been as a performer and a talent over the years. But Bam Bam's definitely, definitely underrated. I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, then he also asked, Owen Hart versus Draws in the ladder match, who dies first? Uh, Draws would have a chance of survival because he's still alive. It's not even a good question. It was just terrible. Patrick Driscoll. Uh, what were your thoughts on Randy Orton's legend killer gimmick? I mean, it was a hook. It was something that worked for him. I was never huge on Orton for all that time because, to me, everything they did with him always felt forced. Like, they were just trying to manufacture it. They were trying to cram it instead of allowing him to get over organically. They crossed over beyond a push in the positioning to a cramming and a forcing, and that's a big difference. Constantinos Papacostas. Would you like the idea of the Wyatt family being the authority? No. Uh -uh. No. Micah Muhammad, keep one, push one, fire one. Bailey, Cameron, and Renee Young. I'll, oh, y'all piss y'all off. I'll keep Cameron for obvious reasons. I'll push Bailey, and I'll fire Renee Young because at some point in time, frankly, anyway, she'll go to ESPN or somewhere else. In my opinion, I'm just guessing. Somebody's going to want her, and WWE probably isn't going to want to pony up the dough in order to keep an announcer or an interviewer. So somebody will step up to the plate, ESPN, Fox Sports, NBC Sports. Somebody will probably step up and pay her big, and she'd be a fool not to take it. Uh, Pietro Cervale. So that would be why I would fire Renee Young. It would be and no, nothing personal. It would be more so she'll probably be gone soon enough anyways. Might as well just hurry it up and move on and get it over with. Uh, he asked a couple questions. First, do you think Stone Cold Steve Austin will wrestle at WrestleMania 32 in Texas? I do. I do. I really, really do. And frankly, as long as he can get medically cleared... And he doesn't think Lesnar's suplexes will break his fucking neck. You know, he's going to get a monster payday. What type of performer or legend would you be if you didn't want to perform in front of 105, 110, or more thousand people in, at that uh, AT&T Stadium? The hell type of legend are you? Yeah, I think he wants to. Uh, he also asked, name your top NBA starting five of all time. <laughs> I don't know if you're talking about a team starting five or just like, you know, if I had to name one small forward, power forward, center, point guard, shooting guard. Um, so if that is the case, I would go on that. Obviously, the two guard would be Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Uh, the three would have to be Scottie Pippen. Because I'm not just trying to put together the five best players of all time, let's say. I've got to have the five players that I think could also fit well together and play well together. At the power forward, I'd probably have to go with, I hate to leave Larry Legend off the list, but I've got to go with maybe Tim Duncan. In terms of at the five, I've got to go with, and this is maybe personal preference. And again, like I said, in part I'm trying to build this as a, as a team type of situation. Uh, at the five, Hakeem Olajuwon would have to be that guy, perhaps. Um, I mean, there's a lot of centers you could choose from, obviously. In terms of point guards, man, you could go Magic, you could go Stockton, you could honestly go Jason Kidd, you could go a lot of different directions. Um, yeah, I'll probably go with, man, Magic wasn't shit defensively, though. Um, I'd probably go with Jason Kidd, again. Trying to build a team 
Not just, you know, if I was saying greatest point guard of all time, Magic Johnson. So there you go. Yeah, so that would be. And he also asked, are you a Democrat or Republican? Neither. Registered as neither. Thank God I'm not. My philosophy on it is very simple. A good question, though, is that I'm not going to sit there and tell anybody to vote for a Democratic candidate, let's say in 2016, because I don't really know why you would. Um, I might not be as frustrated with somebody if they did, because I at least somewhat understand it. But I can't see how anybody in good conscience can sit there and vote for a Republican candidate. I guess that's my view on it. I'm not enamored with the Democratic Party, don't like most of their candidates, don't like what the party stands for, um, but I just detest the GOP and what they are candidates say and do and what they stand for. That makes sense. Uh, Benedict Infinity Ward, if the internet didn't exist, who would be the most over superstar in WWE? Probably Cena. Luke Wynn Staley, is 2015 the year where the Schleich Daddy's love for professional wrestling dies? I don't think my love for professional wrestling will ever die. Is there a chance that I would stop watching? Sure. But I'm still watching them halfway through the year, plus, so yeah. odds are I'll still be watching something come 2016. Gerard Jazz Montague, have you seen the awkward twer twerking video by China? No. Why the hell would I want to click on that and see that? Javon Mallet, would you want to see a Cena Cesaro Owens triple threat at SummerSlam? Sure, what the fuck, why not? Eric Davis, does the NXT title hold more value currently compared to the IC title? Not even, is that even a question? God, yes. Let's see here. What else do we got? Uh, let's see here. Braden Crocker, how much will Charlotte and Sasha Banks improve the Divas division? If they're not allowed to do it, the Divas division on Raw, what they did at NXT, then absolutely none. Just give you a couple of fresh faces, and that is fucking it. You can only overcome the environment so much, honestly. Uh, let's see here. Cynthia Davidson. How did you hear about Andre Warrior and Savage's deaths, and how did you hear about the Benoit tragedy? Benoit tragedy, I was working at Foot Locker. It was a Monday, and somebody came in and told me about it. And, of course, then at that time, I quipped, ugh. Kid must have forgotten to tap out. But he do put the cross face on both of them. Uh, Savage's death, I heard about it work. Warrior's death, I heard about it work. Andre's death, I heard from somebody at school. Yes, that's what it was. All right, what else have we got here? I'm scrolling up here, bear with me. Braden Crocker. Oh, here's another one. How can you want to fuck Serena Williams over Skylar Diggins? Number one, Serena Williams has more meat. Number two, I think her body is better just overall based off of how she carries that extra meat. Number three, she has a much darker complexion, which is something that's always floated my thingy. Number four, this is history shit going back to where I was a teenager, because you got to remember Serena Williams and I are about the same age. So there's years and years and years of this. Skylar Diggins is hot, yes. If I was available and had the opportunity would I plow her and try to ruin her WNBA career by impregnating her four, five, six times? Probably. Probably. However, it doesn't compare to the historical significance of wanting to go to one of those super places that I've never been but always wanted to be, which is Serena Williams' vagine hole. Okay? That's, you know, this is a decade and a half, almost two decades of shit. I mean, this was shit I was spank banking to when I was 15, 16 years old. You can't compare that to Skylar Diggins! This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And to those that don't think Serena's sexy because she's all big and buff and everything else, oh my god, let's go find a girl that will split the M&M &M with six others and then introduce themselves to Mr. Buki. Ah, ah, ah. Fuck you. She's hot. Don't be hating. So anyways, sorry I couldn't get through more of them, but our time is up. Make sure you check out the Twitter Q&A. Make sure you check out Schleg Daddy TV if you want my thoughts on other sports and other topics. Thanks to you that submitted your questions on Facebook. Bye-bye.